Okay, welcome everybody. I'd like to introduce to you Sue Brown. Step in, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> Sue's a spoken word artist and she'll be performing with Fitzroy Brown. Say hello, Fitzroy. <laughs> Fitzroy's our double bassist for today. So it's Fitzroy, I've got it wrong, Karen. It's live, just to prove it. <laughs> I'm going to step out of the way. <laughs> get me in trouble then. Thank you. <laughs> This piece is called Better Must Come. From the bright, sunny, tropical rhythms of the colonial West Indian collectives, easy stepping migrants make a trot to the so called motherland, England. You see, for many, Life seemed limited and harder to prosper in their native born land. Here at least, England portrays a life filled with streets paved with gold. So many West Indians accepted the British invitation and made their plans. Jamaican born musician, upright bass player, my dad, Joseph Brown, surmised. Me, me not go to England for anger. Just work hard for send money home for care for family and land. Me, nah, me not stopping long. Save little money, and after five years, me gone, gone. Naturally, for these pioneers, later known as the Windrush generation. This was a pleasure to come and serve Her Majesty in the rebuilding of her country to fill the post-war labor shortage. Little did they know that after a lifetime to come, after working and contributing to the wealth of this country, that some would be serving dime, even deportation for Her Majesty's pleasure. Anyways, a Jamaican song laments. Better must come. March 1955, after three weeks at sea, the revamped retired warship, the Santa Maria, limbers into the cold, dark, dismal dank port of the illustrious Southampton Docks. Her consignment, black settlers. A few years earlier, 1948, coverage from media attention echoed a warm and friendly welcome. Now, they provoke inflammatory headlines. Black flood, and when will it end? It looks as though the mother country's begun to express her concerns towards her colonial children. Anyway, young, gifted, and Jamaican. Felt hats, floral shirts, and of course the finest suits and dresses in the world. Disembark with style and grace. <laughs> These shows had never ever seen before. Brown trendy grips, suspend from rich colored willing hands. Comely, beautiful hands, hard working testimony of heritage, culture, and pride. Lord have mercy, a diss them called Great Britain. One by one, Hopeful, smiling faces begin to wince and grimace at their first sight of the land of hope and glory, confused, trembling and clinging tightly to their fluttering summer garments. Neat hats begun to leap high into the breezy, bracy, wintry air, while immaculate hairdos tumbles into an unexpected frenzy. With such a disdain approach, harsh, bitter winds terrorize and interrogate each sun-kissed traveler. 
obviously the forebearer to passport control regulations. God save our gracious queen. Passport. Oh, good day to you, sir. And um, what is your reason for coming to England, sir? Reason? But no matter England invited children, sir. Next. No, no, hold on, hold on. Listen. Me? Me is a hard-working laborer from Jamaica. We come for fix up the place that Hitler mashed down. Laborer? Uh, we have different standards to what you may be used to, sir. But is you invite us to come and rebuild your broke down country, sir? Because uno na dweet. Hmm. What else do you do, sir? Oh, me? Me? Me is a musician. A few of the boys, they are ready, like Andy Hamilton and the great Lord Kitchener. We bring little rhythm, become nice of the place. Yes. We've heard your jungle music, sir. It's not very British now, is it? Next. What a welcome. It wasn't long before reality began to creep through. Miss Emma Wan go home. Miss Emma Wan go home, Mammy Country. Miss Emma Wan go home. Miss Emma Wan go home, Mammy Yard. A few months later, letters home to let folks know that England wasn't quite what they had expected. Dear Muma, good day. I hope when this letter reach you, it may find you in the best of health. Mama, you remember the English white man who come to town begging us to come and rebuild the motherland? Guess what? Me can't find him. Nahim did say, oh, we are all brothers and sisters in this world. What better to come and serve those who served and fought for your free world? And mama, remember all the jobs and vacancy this man did advertise. Him never tell we say we have to read between the lines, the lies, for discover the unwritten laws of the color bar system. As professionals, we already have the experience but them tell we say, oh, with great enthusiasm. You'll have to retrain, start at the bottom, reapply, then come again. But it not stop there. Every house me go free apply. Mama them put up signs saying, no Irish, no dogs, no blacks. But where were those signs when we were called to fight in their great white world wars. And as for the streets being paved with gold, mama, Jamaica might be poor and have little things, but at least we clean, clean. Mama, me carry the big old beers to perform at one club. Me walk, me walk, me walk little more because what? Nobody won't give me a lift, not even taxi. When I reach at the door, the doorman blocked me himself. We were expecting you earlier, boy. Anyways, it's whites only, and you're not welcome. So, hop it. When I'm looking at the window, the band is white, they might play jazz, but they already have a boy I play bass. He couldn't even run the skills. But his skin is white and mine is not. Mama, this place really look like the land of hardship for the black man, woman and child. 
perhaps nothing really changed from the plantation system. But we now not give up. Who knows what the future will bring if we make a try. After all, we are West Indians and as African ascendants, we have to remember said, the great Marcus Messiah Garvey, come and inspire us from these tribulations. So, the harder they come, we know say, we have to stand firm. We can't make them beat us down. Anyhow, mama, we see how things go. Better must come. Thank you. Thank you. So, mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't know where to start with that, but I'll tell you where I am going to start actually. Uh -huh. Audience, our in house studio audience, make some noise for Steve Brown. <laughs> and I'm going to get it right, Fitzroy Karen, <laughs> our bassist. <laughs> well, I'm two feet. Yeah. Oh, brilliant! Thank you. So, still, I was stood there making some notes, which I've got paper in my hand this time, uh -huh. and I, I don't know where to start to unpack that as well. Mm -hmm. So, let's go back to the beginning because okay. I mentioned your father, Joseph. Yeah, Joseph Brown. Brown. Let's start at the beginning. Okay. So, tell me a bit about Joseph. Brown All right. And what inspired like you. many, like many people who came here in the fifties, forties, and fifties, my dad came here. Um, a few years later, my mother came, and they came from Jamaica. Um, and as my piece shows, you know, their time here, it wasn't quite what they had expected. Oh, yeah. But, um, you know, but as he said, we are, as he would put it, we are Jamaicans or we are West, West Indians. Yeah. And you just have to try, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Did you find he spoke about his experience here? I mean, you remember meeting yeah. him. Did he speak about it a lot? Was he vocal? All the time. All the All time. The time. <laughs> yeah. So we've got this mixed message where some people didn't talk about it, yeah. didn't enjoy it. But he talked about it, yeah. yeah. And there was a, something else, there's, there's a few things. Curious, you've got to hold on, we're going to be jumping around here like crazy so much as well. You talked about the five year plan as uh, well, which most of them came here with yeah, a five year five plan. Year so plan. Can you yeah, so on that? That, was the, that was the idea. Like you said, save some money mm -hmm. to go home, just be here for five years. But then after a time you're here and then you perhaps have a relationship, have children, you know, and then things are hard to kind mm. of return home. So many stayed. Yeah, and I think that's why we now have our first, second, and third generation mm -hmm. of descendants mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. So let's go back as well. What else did I pick up? There's so much to talk about there. <laughs> um, you talked about him playing with Andy Hamilton as well. Yeah. Great so as well. Um, I'm not sure if my dad knew Andy Ham before he yeah. left um, Jamaica, but definitely when he came here. Yeah. So as a bass player, so my dad played upright bass. He played um, baritone sax. Mm -hmm. uh, clarinet. He played a number of um, instruments, actually. Right, as well. Mm -hmm. And is that where you picked up your musical ability? Uh, yeah, I, well, yeah. In a spoken word fashion. Spoken word. Yeah, I don't play an instrument. You don't play instruments? No. After all that? I know. <laughs> so when I was, when we, you know, I was asked yeah. to um, do this piece, I thought it would be fitting to have mm. a bass player. And hence, this is why I asked Fitzroy. So it's a tribute. Yeah. A tribute to Joseph Brown. Yeah. As yeah. well. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about as well, you really packed a lot of information in there about yes. everybody's experiences, mm -hmm. so it was really, mm -hmm. I don't have much to say after that. <laughs> I had a whole script here to talk about, and you seem to and fit it in the song yeah. as well. Yeah. How long did it take you to write that song? Or so the first, I think the first two verses were something, verse, first two paragraphs, there was something that I'd written before, so I adapted it for this, for my dad. Mm. So everything, all those things about my dad, those, you know, I put in later on. Mm -hmm. Okay, as well. Mm -hmm. um, now, you talk about influences from the Wingus generation as well. Yes. Your first descendant, Wingus, is yes, the yeah. generation as well. Yeah, so what's your experience? Let's put your family as a side. What's uh -huh. your personal experience of Wingus and then that reflecting that back in the song? Because like I said, you spoke about a lot of things that would have yeah. been personal to you. Yeah. Um, you know, I was born in the 60s, 1961. You didn't have to admit that. <laughs> <one>. okay. <laughs> that's cool, that's cool. And um, yeah, so my earliest memories, things were hard, yeah. things, you know. Um, I can, I remember my dad, you know, going to work as a laborer and stuff. My mother died when I was very young. Mm. Um, so it was difficult for him to look after the children. Right, okay. Um, in those times, and the infrastructure wasn't really set up mm. 
to, to help support in the way it may do today. Right. So he had to kind of rely on a few friends and things like Perhaps that. Yeah. yeah. And it's that community again, isn't it? Where mm. people came in and yeah. spoke in their little communities yeah. and villages yeah. as well. Yeah. Oh, that's absolutely brilliant. See, we've run out of time, yeah. unfortunately, okay. but there's so much more. But thank you for joining us, mm -hmm. along with Fitzroy. Thank you. All, All right, right, then. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.